Welcome back. Thanks to our partner, Wild Bean Cafe. Now, there are set to be some big changes for both first home buyers and investors this year. Thanks to our partners at Property Apprentice, we find out what this could mean for you. Owner and financial advisor, Debbie Roberts, joins us now. Thank you very much. Great to see you again, um, Debbie. What are some of the big changes that we should keep an eye on this year? Oh, man, where do I start? Like, there's yeah. so many changes happening this year, or potentially at least. So I've written some of them down. Uh, we've got confidence in the housing market has come back really strongly from last year. So that is an early indicator that more and more people will be entering the property market. I think this is going to be the year for first home buyers and particularly new investors. So, you know, watch out. But um, yeah, good opportunities there because there's still not a large number of buyers in the market. So good opportunities there to get a good deal before the rest of the people decide it's a good time to buy. Um, we've got home consents down 25% from last year. And so not as many houses being consented to be built in the future. Um, populations on the increase, especially with strong net migration. So more people, less properties. You know, prices are going to start going up at some stage. Days to sell has started to drop as well. So turnover in the housing market's picking up. What else have we got? Um, oh, so on the downside, we've got 55% of mortgages are going to be refixing at higher rates this year. So that's that's going to have a massive impact on affordability, which on the bright side also means that that's going to put a huge amount of pressure on inflation. My personal pick is that interest rates could start coming down a lot sooner than most people think, potentially even as early as May. We'll see. Could, could some of the other changes as well, like the bright line test, the government's reducing from 10 down to 2, I think it is, into yep. deductibility as well for landlords, yep. um, and the rental rules are changing as well. So Absolutely. when you say there might be some more first-time investors coming into the market, is, are those helping them come in? Yeah, I think I think it'll certainly help. I think it's great news for tenants, you know, bringing more property investors into the market. It's a great time to be a new investor as well because one of the other things that is getting looked at introducing is the debt to income ratios from the Reserve Bank. So that's going to have much less impact on new investors as it will on investors with large portfolios. I mean, having said that, I personally don't think debt to incomes are going to make much of a difference at all when it comes to getting lending at the moment because banks are testing your affordability at 9% interest rates. Wow. <laughs> so, okay. yeah, exactly. So at the moment, it's the test rates that are restricting lending. When interest rates come down and test rates reduce, that's when the DTIs will potentially have more of an impact. Because at the moment, um, what the Reserve Bank's proposing is far less than the number of, of actual mortgages that are getting written above those debt-to-income ratios. The 9%, is that because they think... They don't think there's surely a realistic chance that we'd get to 9%, but do they always test a few percentage points above? They do where... tend to, and that's why I think when debt to incomes, if they get introduced, because it's still in the proposal stages, but when interest rates drop and the test rates drop accordingly, uh, then that'll be where DTIs have a much, mm. much more of an impact than what we're currently seeing. But yeah, I don't think anyone's expecting interest rates to increase to 9%. It's oh. part of the responsible lending code, though. Banks have to be responsible and test you at that higher rate. I hope not. I hope not. Um, so everything's looking quite rosy. Is there anything people should be cautious about? I think people should be cautious of overextending themselves. You know, so you know, it's it's something that we always bang on about. <laughs> property yeah. apprentices is making sure that you're understanding what it is that you're getting into. So if you're new to investing, learn about it. The more you learn, the lower your risk is. And as a first home buyer. Maybe lower your standards a little bit. Your first home doesn't have to be the forever home. Mm. You know, don't mortgage yourself up to the eyeballs and mm. then put yourself under financial pressure. Mm. Are there going to be some more mortgagee sales out there? With this? Mortgagee sales have started increasing, mm. and I think that's part of why I'm saying I think there's a lot more pain in the economy than most people think. Mm. So, yeah, it's... I think things could potentially get a bit worse for some people before they start getting better. Mm. It's a good thing about being um, the whole compromise thing with first-time buyers because you always have to compromise on something, right? Yeah. Um, that's good advice. Thank you so much for coming in. That is Debbie Roberts, the property apprentice owner and financial advisor as well. Um, and that segment was thanks to our partners at Property Apprentice.